In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure and use MCP servers with Gemini CLI. So if you go to Gemini CLI and you type slash MCP, you're going to see a list of MCP servers that are currently configured with Gemini CLI. As you can see, I don't have any MCP servers configured. So let me walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how you can bring any MCP server and use it with Gemini CLI. But first, we need to create a settings.json file. For that, we're going to first quit Gemini CLI. Now, you might already have a .gemini folder in your root directory. If you don't have it, just type make directory and dash p. And next, we're going to use this command. So this is going to be using Visual Code Studio to open this settings.json file. But you can use any editor of your choice to open this file once you create it. Let's open it. Now, when I was configuring Gemini CNI, I chose the preferred editor and the authentication method. Some of those settings are here. But let me show you how you can add an MCP server. For this example, we are going to be using Bright Data MCP Server, which enables LLMs, agents, and apps to access, discover, and extract web data in real time. So Bright Data is essentially data scraping service, which lets you extract data from a number of different websites where usually it's hard to scrape data from, for example, LinkedIn, Amazon, Reddit, YouTube, etc. It's a paid service, but they were kind enough to provide some credits for my audience. Link are going to be in the video description. And they are also the sponsor of today's video. And the same instructions will apply to any MCP servers that you want to configure with Gemini CLI. So if you go down, here is a JSON schema of how to configure the MCP server. So we're going to copy this. And here we're going to go back. Now make sure you add a comma, then hit enter. And then we are going to replace this. I think I just need to remove this and the last one. Okay, next. Okay, there's a comma missing here. So let's add that. So we need to provide our API token, web unlocker zone, browser zone, and rate limits. Okay, for this, you will need to go back to Bright Data. Just sign up using the link in the description below. And here is the interface that you're going to see. So we're going to click on proxies and scraping. Now you have a number of different options. There's a browser API key, but I'm going to be using the web unlocker API. And this is automated scraping for the hardest sites, leveraging residential proxies, solving captchas and rendering JS using custom fingerprints and cookies. So this is probably the best option that you want to use. We are going to click on create zone. You can provide any name. Let's go with the default name of Web Unlocker 4. I think I have some other names already created. Also, you want to enable CAPTCHA Solver and then just click on Add. Now, it wants to send us a summary of this configuration. I'll just click on Yes. Okay, so here are the different configurations. The main thing that you need is the zone, which is Web Unlocker 4, and the API key. Now, if we just close this, here's my API key. But don't worry, I am going to refresh this API key after this video. So we're going to just copy this. Okay, so we're going to set the Web Unlocker Zone to Web Unlocker 4. Browser Zone, MCP Server, by default, it's fine. I am setting the rate limits pretty aggressively, but you can set those based on your needs. And we're going to just provide our API token here. Okay, so we are all done. Now, next we need to restart our Gemini CLI so that the new settings are going to take place. And now you're going to see that it shows one MCP server. So if we go to MCP now, we're going to see that it's using the Bright Data MCP server and it has a bunch of different tools. So there are search engines, scrape as a markdown, and then you can get web data from different websites which is pretty awesome, right? So you can get data from LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, different Google services, YouTube, Reddit, right? So it's pretty comprehensive. Okay, so let's ask it something very specific. So I'm going to say what are the latest stats of the YouTube channel 
I'm going to just provide the link to my YouTube channel. All right, we're going to also ask it to give us what are the last 10 videos on this channel. Now, if you're using the free version of Gemini CNI, you might see this message from time to time. So I think I decided to go from Gemini 2.5 Pro to Gemini 2.5 Flash. Okay, so based on our request, it decided to use the Web Data YouTube Profile tool within the Bright Data MCP server. Now, the good thing is that it asks you for permission. Now, you can always allow, but in this case, I'm going to just say allow. Here are some quick stats. It listed the top 10 or the latest 10 videos. So, this is the latest video. So, pretty neat, right? It's able to extract that information directly from YouTube and seems like it's very up to date. Right now, it's using Gemini 2.5 Flash and seems like there was one single error as well. Now, the way you can look at the error is you can just press Control and O, and this is going to show you the error that it ran into. So it seems like there were way too many requests because I'm using the free version of Gemini CLI at the moment. But the good thing is that it simply went back to 2.5 flash. Now, in order to effectively use tools available in an MCP server, you really need to understand what the expected input is. Okay, so let's say if we look at these tools, there are a number of different tools for different platforms. But if you type control T, this is going to give you a more detailed overview of what each tool expects. So you'll see two different types of tools. Some that require a specific URL, another that will require a structure text query. Now, the MCP server will be able to generate the URLs that are going to be fed into the tools using the web search. But I have found that Gemini CLI sometimes have trouble generating the correct inputs. Let me show you what I mean. So here's a very detailed query that I'm going to give to Gemini CLI. And let's see if it's going to be able to use the LinkedIn job listening tool on the Bright Data MCP server. So here we are asking it to use the LinkedIn and Indeed to figure out jobs for AI engineer. And then there is a very specific set of information that we want to extract. So this is within the LinkedIn.txt file. And I think it's a good point at which I can show you how you can use files as inputs to Gemini CLI. So I'm going to tell it to use the instruction in and then in order to point to a specific file, you just need to provide the path of that file. So let's run this. So you can see that it's going to extract the text using the read many files tool. So it generated Google search query for it. Now Gemini CLI has access to those tools through the MCP server, but it's still trying to use Google search. I haven't figured out a way to disable certain tools that are by default available to Gemini CNI. I think if we disable Google search, it might start using tools available to the MCP server. I tried this a couple of times with Gemini CNI, but haven't been able to make it work. You can actually use the same bright data MCP server with cloud desktop and it works fine. So for example, I ran this query previously on cloud desktop. Now, if we come here, we can see that the bright data MCP is configured on cloud desktop. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. I ran the same query and you can see that initially it used the bright data search engine to look for jobs that we were asking for. Then it scraped specific web links on LinkedIn did another web search, a couple of more scraping sessions. And based on the information that it collected, here are a couple of job listings that it created for us. Now, how exactly you set up the Bright Data MCP server on Cloud Desktop? So it's that simple. Just go to Cloud Settings. Here, go to Developers. Now, I have already configured Bright Data, but if you haven't, you're going to see edit config or add config. And then it's going to take you to this cloud desktop config.json file. Just open this and you're going to do exactly the same things that we did with Gemini CLI. 
So provide your API token and set the other configurations exactly the same way. Okay, so that's how you set up MCP servers with Gemini CNI. I think there is still a long way to go, but since it's open source, there's going to be very fast progress on Gemini CLI. Also, do check out Bright Data. There's going to be a link with some credits. And thanks to them for sponsoring the video. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.